produced by the Pacific Northwest Agricultural Safety and Health Center at the University of Washington. Funding for this project was provided by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health and the Washington State Medical Aid and Accident Fund. Because it's visual and it can be manipulated, the trainer has some ownership in its level of effectiveness. I think it's very flexible and portable. We're able to manage how it's used, and if it's done correctly, it's very effective. Not only do you see the results, but it's on your body, and it's interactive. Karen Lewis, Washington State University Extension. Hello, my name is Richard Fenske. I'm a professor at the University of Washington School of Public Health and director of the Pacific Northwest Agricultural Safety and Health Center. We first began to use fluorescent tracers to monitor pesticide exposure back in 1979 in Canada's Okanagan Valley. When applicators saw the glow of the tracer on their skin and their clothing, the feedback was immediate. They could recall a particular moment when exposure occurred and then make suggestions to make sure the exposure didn't happen again. Seeing is believing in this case. The tracer sends a direct and powerful message that's perfectly suited to training. Over the years, researchers, educators, and even artists have asked, how can I get started with the tracer? Fluorescent tracer technique has been used in North America, Europe, and in many other parts of the world, including Nicaragua, Ecuador, and Cambodia. Our fluorescent tracer manual pulls together the knowledge from all of this work. You may want to do a quick demonstration to capture your group's attention, monitor pesticide application procedures, conduct hands-on training, or give a boost to your worker protection standard training. This manual gives you step-by-step field-tested procedures to use the tracer effectively. I'm very pleased that we can offer you this kit as a single source for using the fluorescent tracer. On behalf of everyone who made this tracer manual possible, good luck. Getting started. The fluorescent tracer, or FT technique, is a way to mimic pesticide contamination. This non-toxic chemical is used to mark areas where pesticides may come in contact with skin, clothing, and surfaces. Like some pesticides, fluorescent tracers are invisible and cannot be seen when mixed, diluted, and applied under normal lighting. Unlike pesticides, they glow under a special lamp called a black light. This glow can show potential areas of contamination. Patterns of contamination are clues that show how pesticide exposures may occur. Was there a tear in the personal protective equipment? Did a splash occur? Using the FT technique will provide immediate visual feedback and a clear picture of contamination routes. This DVD was designed to complement the fluorescent tracer manual and kit. It will provide useful instructions to expand pesticide handler training. Please note that the manual is divided into two parts. Part one provides step-by-step -step examples of demonstrations, activities, and techniques. Part two provides helpful hints and information on obtaining supplies. You may find it useful to read Getting Started with Fluorescent Tracers. It may also be helpful to familiarize yourself with the contents of the kit. Additional copies of the manual in Spanish or English can be downloaded from the Panache Center's website. Health and Safety When using the FT technique, be sure to have the following safety materials on hand. Chemical protective gloves, safety glasses, the material safety data sheet for the tracers, and rubbing alcohol if used. Most manufacturers include material safety data sheets MSDS online. Black lights. Black lights emit a type of ultraviolet light called long wave UVA. The UVA used in the fluorescent tracer technique is not harmful, but extended exposure may irritate eyes and accelerate aging. These responses are unlikely to happen during the following brief demonstrations. Nevertheless, you should always be cautious. Do not hold the black light within six inches of anyone's eyes and do not look directly at the bulb. Doing so may cause eye discomfort. 
Demonstration volunteers should wear protective UVA safety glasses. Fluorescent tracers. Fluorescent tracers are commonly used as whitening agents in laundry detergents. Tracer contains properties that glow in the dark by absorbing ultraviolet rays and reflecting bright, visible light. It is considered safe to handle, but it's always a good practice to handle chemicals with gloves. To be safe, never spray any of the tracer solutions directly onto the face. Rubbing alcohol or isopropanol is used in some tracer recipes. It can cause skin irritation, and splashes to the eyes may cause eye damage. Always wear chemical safety goggles when handling isopropanol and do not spray in an enclosed area. Check the material safety data sheet and health and safety section of the manual for more information before using isopropanol. Helpful hints. Tracers and tracer solutions will show varying levels of brightness under different levels of light and on different material. Before training begins, turn off the lights and test visibility of the tracer mixture with a black light. If you want a brighter, more visible glow, use a stronger black light or add more tracer to the recipe. It is important to test recipes and materials in advance. Have spare batteries and extension cords when needed. Use dark clothing whenever possible as it makes the tracer easier to see and be aware that tracer will not show on red fabric. Be creative when setting up a dark area. Find a location convenient to your demonstration area and remove all trip hazards. The space should be large enough for participants to stand comfortably and see clearly. Use dark fabric to cover openings and bright objects in the room. If the space is too bright, you can ask participants to huddle close together to create an even darker area with their bodies. If it is still not dark enough, you might consider training at night. Teaching small groups is recommended. Working with fewer people gives each participant an opportunity to view results in the dark. These demonstrations lend truth to the adage, seeing is believing. Quick demos. Baseball cap. The purpose of this quick demonstration is to show that clothing can be a source for pesticide contamination. Contamination can lead to extended exposure and unintended transportation of pesticide residues off the work site. The baseball cap demonstration requires recipe A from the manual. Carefully measure out these ingredients ahead of time. One half teaspoon Tinopol CBSX powder. 1 and 1 quarter cups water. 1 and 1 half cups rubbing alcohol isopropanol. You will need measuring cups and spoons, as well as a spray bottle and funnel from the FT kit. First, add the Tinopol powder. Then slowly add water. Finally, add the rubbing alcohol. Mix with a thin stirring implement or by swirling in a container. It is possible that clumps of powder may form. These clumps will eventually dissolve, but the process can be accelerated by periodic swirling of the spray bottle. All clumps should be dissolved before conducting the demonstration. This is one reason that we always recommend preparing and practicing ahead of time. Just before the demonstration begins, spray tracer onto the hat, making sure to dampen it thoroughly. Spray underneath on the edge of the sweatband, the top of the bill, and outside. It will take several sprays for the hat to be properly coated. Start the demonstration by asking a volunteer to put on and wear the contaminated cap. Encourage them to handle the bill. Start a discussion with the group by asking questions like, Why do you wear baseball caps? Is it to keep your hood up, or do you just like to wear them? What's the risk of wearing a cap while handling pesticides? More questions and discussion tips are listed in the manual. After the discussion, enter the dark area. Provide your volunteer with protective eyewear, turn on the lights, and shine the black light over their hands and face. 
have them remove the cap to reveal that Tracer has been transferred to their forehead. Make sure that everyone gets a chance to see, and don't forget your volunteer. Give them a mirror so they can see too. This demonstration provides specific talking points on how caps and other clothing and accessories can absorb pesticides. Showing the ease of transfer will help start a discussion on the reasons for handling these items as if they are PPE, and that it's important to wash them after each use. Quick demos. Unplugging a nozzle. Bring proper tools to safely unplug spray nozzles. This demonstration will show the importance of using proper tools and safety precautions while working around pesticides. Using improper tools or practices can lead to increased exposure. The unplugging a nozzle demonstration requires recipe B from the manual. One quarter teaspoon flour. One squirt of glow germ lotion. A bowl or flat surface works well as a mixing container. First, measure the flour and then add one squirt of glow germ from the bottle in the kit. Mix into a medium thick paste. The paste should be thick enough that it can easily clog your demonstration nozzle without dripping or being too grainy. In order to get the correct consistency, practice preparing it ahead of time. Use a toothpick from the kit to scoop it up and clog the nozzle. After the nozzle has been clogged and the demonstration begins, ask a volunteer to unplug it without using tools or their mouth. After the volunteer has cleared the nozzle, move the group into the dark area. Provide the volunteer with protective eyewear and shine the black light on their hands and clothing to reveal the extent of contamination spread. Start your discussion by asking, what do you do when a spray nozzle gets plugged? Was their approach common? Use this demonstration as an example of how contact with hand-to-face may occur and to discuss the tools and techniques required to safely unplug a spray nozzle. Remind participants to check the manufacturer's instructions for clearing clogged spray equipment. Use thin 8 millimeter nitrile gloves. Use a small soft brush to clear obstructions and never use your mouth. Tracer in the tank, air blast. This section contains stories about a real pesticide application that included fluorescent tracer. The stories demonstrate PPE failure, as well as work practices, behaviors, and environmental conditions that resulted in skin and clothing contamination. Using tracer enabled handlers to identify and develop solutions for problems discovered during the process. A standard pesticide application took place in an eastern Washington orchard. Fluorescent tracer was added to the pesticide container before mixing and loading. The orchard was sprayed according to the pesticide label over a four-hour session. The handlers who participated were volunteers and either mixer loaders or applicators. All volunteers were provided black clothes to wear under their PPE because it's easier to see tracer on dark clothing. Detailed instructions for using tracer during an application can be found in the fluorescent tracer manual. During the application, Panache staff observed the session and took notes on routine and non-routine activities. Wind and temperature were also noted. These observations were helpful when trying to understand how the fluorescent tracer contaminated skin or clothing. It was an important part of the process when developing solutions to prevent future contamination. Routine activities to observe include mixing, loading, and applying pesticides, removal and decontamination of PPE, and cleaning of spray equipment. Non-routine activities to observe may include adjusting, repairing, and maintaining application equipment, water or bathroom breaks, eating, and the use of cell phones and radios. After the application was complete, Volunteers removed their PPE and cleaned it as they normally would. The handlers then gathered in the dark area and took turns under black light where they discovered the tracer results and discussed possible solutions. Here are some of those stories. 
a leaky seam. An applicator, who had been given a new jacket, reported that the neck of his shirt was wet, which could easily have been dismissed as perspiration. Throughout the application, he was observed properly wearing his PPE, yet when he took his turn under the black light, a clear band of tracer showed up around his neck. The tracer showed that even with proper PPE use, his clothing was contaminated. The other applicators in the group suggested looking at the jacket seams. A close examination showed that even though the jacket was new, the seam seal along the neckline was faulty and had failed. The employer's response was to immediately check the other jackets. Replacements were ordered the same day. What's the message? Tracers can be used to identify PPE failures. Something up your sleeve? Under black light, a mixer loader showed substantial fluorescent tracer on his sleeve. He was surprised that there was contamination inside his PPE. The group was able to use this opportunity to discuss their work practices. They realized that while he was wearing the proper gloves and PPE, water and pesticide ran down his glove and onto his sleeve when he rinsed the pesticide container. During this action, he would reach up and empty the container into the spray tank. Another handler mentioned hearing about a special way to duct tape the gloves to the jacket sleeves to prevent liquids from getting in. In this case, the tracer illuminated an unexpected route of potential exposure and allowed the handler to take actions to protect himself. The fluorescent tracer manual has instructions for taping sleeves, a method recommended by the WSDA. What's the message? Tracers allow individuals and groups to identify unknown exposures and help solve the problem. It's a cinch. During application, observers noticed that one of the applicators had his hood open at the neck, unlike the others who had cinched it tight around their faces. Because his hood was loose and open, we wanted to look at his neck under the black light. Results showed exposure on the applicator's neck. In this photo, the outline of his well-fitting, full-face respirator is clearly defined. Why was this handler exposed? At this point, observers' records became very important. The observer noted that not only was the applicator's hood open and loose around his face, but at times, the wind blew from behind the sprayer onto the applicator. During discussion in the dark area, the applicator pointed out that if his hood was too tight, then he could not turn his head around far enough to the side to see and check his sprayer. A potential solution would be to provide a larger jacket or one with a roomier hood. Other handlers pointed out that the full-face respirator did a good job of protecting his face. What's the message? Tracers can help determine what actions and environmental conditions may lead to potential exposure. They can also show when safety measures work well. Sit down and take notice. One applicator, concerned about pesticide exposure, noticed that a crack in the tractor seat cover could allow the foam pad inside to soak up spray. To solve the problem, he put a sheet of cardboard on the seat to protect it. After spraying, he looked at his PPE under the black lights to see if his solution was effective. Results showed that the cardboard was soaking up and holding pesticides against the lower portion of his PPE. This surprised the handler. As a temporary measure, he securely attached a large plastic bag over the seat until the seat could be replaced. What's the message? Tracers can help identify if solutions are working as anticipated. Improper PPE removal. Before handlers and applicators went into the dark area, they removed their PPE as they usually do. Under black light, one handler saw a pattern on the front of his sweatshirt. Discussion led the group to the conclusion that he had removed his jacket by grabbing the inside of the front flaps rather than pulling at the front of the jacket. The pattern on his shirt was created by contamination on the fingers of his gloves. Even though he had washed his gloves, they were contaminated again when he touched the jacket. Further discussion led to two points. First, PPE needs to be rinsed before it's removed, and second, that clean items should only touch clean items, and dirty or contaminated items should only touch dirty items.
everyone in the group realized that the clothing they wore underneath their PPE can easily be contaminated and that it must be handled at all times as if it has pesticides on it. Handlers and applicators should store and wash clothing apart from their family's laundry, and they should never wear work clothes more than once without washing. What's the message? Tracers can show how a single action can contaminate clothing. What is tracer? What is not? Several things can be mistaken as tracer contamination, such as lint and soap products that contain brighteners. If necessary, use a lint brush to remove as much lint as possible. Dry skin and calloused hands, sunscreen, some lotions, and makeup powder can also appear to glow under black light. Check for this ahead of time. Light or white-colored clothing and worn-out jeans will also glow. Try to use dark or black clothing. Always view fabric ahead of time to make sure it does not glow. Closing and Acknowledgements Thank you for using our DVD. I hope you'll find the Tracer to be a useful addition to your training program, helping your students better understand safe work practices. Remember, the key to using the fluorescent tracer successfully is to practice ahead, be creative, and enjoy. The exercises included on this DVD and in the manual are intended to be used as a starting point. Experimentation will lead to your own best practices and results, and we would love to hear about them. To share feedback, post activities and demonstrations, or to view other suggestions, please visit this web address. To download additional copies of the manual in Spanish or English, or participate in a survey regarding the use of the FT manual, go to the Panache Center's FT page. For any questions regarding the FT kit or manual, please contact us at panache at u.washington.edu or at 1-800-330-0827.